Hey guys, this is a follow-up video to the video I made yesterday about tracing images with Lightburn. Now, um, yesterday I showed we could um, drop an image in and then trace it. And then um, you basically remove the elements and then send it to the cutter. Where, um, this time, we're going to have a quick look at um, converting the image to SVG and then importing it into Lightburn as an SVG. Now, there's a few, um, like, we'll call them third-party sites that offer to do certain things, and they put restrictions, and they want you to pay and do all of this type of stuff. Um, Adobe Express is an online um, application, I guess you want to call it. It's web-based and it allows a lot of these types of um, things that these other sites try and charge you for. Um, if you have a look here, just a quick look, there's quick actions. You can like remove backgrounds, uh, convert to SVG crop, um, convert to GIF, you know, modify. Pretty much fairly simple operations. But here you have convert to SVG, which is the function that we want. Um, so we'll click convert to SVG, and then we'll take that test image and we'll drop it in there. Now we'll convert it to SVG. We hit download. It'll go to the desktop. And then basically we can just drag and drop it onto Lightburn, and it's already ready to go. So we'll just change the layer so we can see it. And pretty much like we did yesterday, you can just delete the elements um, and then save what you want, send it, you know. Uh, you can group it all pretty much the same as yesterday's video. Um, it's not, nothing much different to yesterday's video except for when you use Lightburn to trace it, you have more control over elements that are skipped and ones that are traced using those settings. But for the most part, um, it can be quick and easy for simple images like that. Um, my wife detailed a, an image yesterday, or the other day in a video, which was Cat Mum, and she used a third-party convert site. And um, this basically does the same. So we can drop that image in there, which is the image she had. And then we can save it as SVG. And then as you'll see, it brings it in and it's an SVG. You can, again, um, modify the elements like she was doing in her video. Uh, the only difference here is, is that we use the Adobe Express instead of the Convert IO site that she likes to use, but I prefer to use the Adobe one. Um, another thing you can do here is after you convert it to SVG using um, Adobe, you can go to Tinkercad. Now Tinkercad's primarily for 3D printing. Um, it's like you can put shapes down, you know, if you're gonna, for a 3D printer, it's very simple, but rather effective. I use it quite a lot to build shapes, um, parts and shapes. You know, you can quickly build a box, can go into a little bit more detail in this one um, in another video, but it's fairly simple. It doesn't require as much as a learning curve as like uh, Fusion 360 or Design 123 or OpenCAD, but it, you know, it can get the shapes done. But f just quickly for this video, um, we can import the SVG I just made of Catmum, and then we'll just drop it on. One of the downfalls to um, Tinkercad is it can be slow, but you just have to deal with it. And then, yeah, we have that SVG. Oop. We have that SVG on the work, workspace. 
and then we could 3D print that if we wanted to, or press D to drop it to the plate. Um, or what we can do if you wanted to is export it again for laser cutting. So um, Tinkercad allows you to work and save or export as SVGs for laser cutting. So, um, so if you wanted to create some text here, you can just drop that down and then type LOL when it wants to play. And then you can click that and export it as an SVG for laser cutting. And it will come up here and it'll cut the lines. So Tinkercab can also be used for die cutting machines, laser cutting, pretty much creating SVGs, which is handy. And um, the only downfall is you kind of can't, if you bring in a, a SVG like I did with that cat mum picture, you can't pull apart the elements. If you wanted to pull it apart, you'd have to um, cut pieces out. So say oh, I just want the word cat and I don't want mum and highlight it all then I'll have to group shapes and that would get rid of mum and then obviously I could you know go back and then um, control C control V make a duplication of it and then group that we got rid of cat I can do the same for mum and, yep. and now we've split the two. It's a little bit, little bit of a pain, but with any luck, one day they change that. Um, Autodesk, hopefully they change that. But for now, that's one way of manipulating it, an SVG. And while we're here, we'll just um, show another feature of Adobe Express, um, which is the remove background. Uh, which is pretty handy. Um, I've used it before and it works really well. Uh, this cat mum picture has a white background. Um, if you open it with photos, you should see it. It's a white background. And you can drag and drop it, remove the background. That takes a couple of seconds, but um, it's an easy way of making the background transparent. And then we'll download it. Takes a little bit. And then now we've got our picture, so we'll open that one with photos again. And now we've got a transparent background. Not exactly perfect, as you can see, but you could clean that up if you wanted to. But for the most part, it will remove the background pretty well. It just depends on the picture that you're using. We'll just jump back to Tinkercad quickly and um, just show you that like, there's different shapes and things you can use. I'll have to make a video later on just showing you a little bit about what Tinkercad's about. And like, like I said, um, you can, it's for 3D printing mainly, but it's quite useful for... Um, other tasks like cutting with silhouette machines or crickets or laser cutters um, like I said you could export this and um, as an SVG cut or you can go into Lightburn and say you want to fill this so you set that to a, a fill layer to make it green and if we were to fill that that won't cut the line that'll basically engrave it'll fill so it's a solid and then you'd be able to if you wanted to engrave that cat mum picture onto a piece of wood or whatever you're going to engrave onto